Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, February 24th, 2017, and I hope everyone is having a beautiful day in the Lord. Um, I have um, one devotional for you today. <laughs> and uh, But first, I'd like to say the Our Father, so please join me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you for the for another day and for all my blessings, large and small, known and unknown. I appreciate everything you give me, all of them. I know where my blessings come from. I love you for so much. I thank you for these ministries and I thank you for hearing us and answering prayer and healing. And uh, I thank you for wisdom, Father, and I, I, I thank you for opening up the keys to the mysteries in the Bible. We are truly living in the last days. That's how I know the truth is just jumping off the pages of the Bible and more and more revelation each day that I take a breath. And I love you for it, Father, because I love the truth. I love your truth and your word. Thank you, Father. Thank you for everything. Amen. All right, this one is called The Voice of the Nature of God. <laughs> Can't do this without my eyes. Okay. I heard the voice of the Lord saying, quotes, Whom shall I send and whom, who will go for us? Unquote. And that's from Isaiah 6 8. When we talk about the call of God, we often forget the most important thing, namely the nature of Him who calls. There are many things calling each of us today. Some of these calls will be answered and others will not even be heard. The call, this is really important now, the sentence, pay attention. The call is the expression of the nature of the one who calls. And we can only recognize the call if that same nature is in us. The call of God is the expression of God's nature, not ours. So basically, this goes back to the Garden of Eden, where I talked about the two seeds. Okay, when the serpent seduced Eve and uh, they... Um, they they knew each other they and uh god told them not to go near that and he beguiled her he seduced her in the garden and then from that point on when she gave birth uh there were two seeds because god says when he was angry in the garden okay when he was angry in the garden he said in Genesis 3, verse 15, he says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Enmity means conflict. Okay? And between thy seed, his seed, and her seed. Now, women's, women don't have seeds. Men have seeds. But because Eve came from God. She was the seed God made her. He formed her from the dust. She was 
the seat of our Heavenly Father. So I will put enmity between the seed of the Father and your seed and all the people that are born from this point forward. And it shall bruise thy head and it um, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Um, and that just tells us that there's uh, it, it confirms what I said that there is a duality in us okay and if we are from the seed of the woman which is God's seed um, our flesh which belongs to Satan when it gets us to sin and move away from the father we will have conflict we will have conflict if we belong to the Father. We will, our conscience will burn from what our flesh does. Um, also want to read a couple of verses here, different places, um, where this also confirms this sentence. In Matthew twenty two fourteen, it says, For many are called, but few are chosen. See? So when God calls, it's the nature of God in you that hears the call of the Heavenly Father. Okay? In Isaiah 44, 9, it says, They make a graven image. All of them are vanity and their delectable things shall not profit and they are in their own they are of their own witness <laughs> they see not nor know that they may be ashamed now when you are not of the seed of god and you are of the seed of satan you don't have that pricking of the conscience that's why you see women that are very very overweight and uh, they do this mostly with women now they showcase their obesity as being big and beautiful okay and they're not ashamed of their sin remember I told you I have this running in my own family and I'm ashamed of being overweight because it's the sin that you wear see I'm aware my conscience is alert and alive and aware okay that my flesh has gotten me to do something that is out of um, the will of the Father for me okay but then you see people that are flaunting their fat their overweightness they're flaunting it they go out on the beach with bikinis and they let it just pounds and pounds just barrel over their clothing and they don't care they flaunt it this is not the seed of God okay he's telling you this and he also says whatever it is even if it's not a being overweight whatever it is it's vanity and they are not witnessing to the father they're witness to themselves it says and they are their own witness okay because they see not nor they know and they're not ashamed we see that with sexual perversion okay we see all these uh, the um, the LGBT parades where they're walking around naked and they're they're uh, doing the nasty to each other in the in the wide open then and and they're flaunting it same thing they're flaunting the sin there's no pricking of the conscience to make them be ashamed that they're out of the will of the father so you see their fathers are calling them through their flesh and there isn't anything telling them inside that they're out of the will of the father because they're actually in their own father's will because they belong to the father you've heard God say in the Bible many times your father is the father of lies and God's children love the truth they absolutely love and live they would die for the truth 
and Satan's children would die for the lie. They would die for that lie. They would take that lie to the grave and smile all the way through their own demise. And one more in Ezekiel 12, 12 says, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of the rebellious house. This is our house. You're, if you're re rebelling in your house, you're not, you don't belong to the Father. Which have eyes to see and see not, and have ears to hear and hear not, for they are a rebellious house. This is the house. Okay? This is the temple. You're either yielding to the Father or you're yielding to Satan. That's it. It's one or the other. And if God is calling you and you can't hear it, there's your answer. The nature of God has to be in you, okay, in order for you to answer that call. Otherwise, you don't see it. You don't hear it. Okay. God providentially weaves the threads of his call through our lives, and only we can distinguish them. It is the threading of God's voice directly to us over a certain concern, and it is useless to seek another person's opinion of it. Our dealings over the call of God should be kept exclusively between ourselves and him. The call of God is not a reflection of my nature, because we were all born in this sinful flesh. My personal desires and temperament are of no consideration, because they were formed from habit and parents and things that we learned on the earth. As long as I dwell on my own qualities and traits and think about what I am suited for, I will never hear the call of God. See, one thing I want to say about being in the body of Christ, there's no such thing as culture or nationality in the body of Christ because everybody becomes one and we, come, we all become the same. And when you see people arguing over um, in the world that uh, this group of people is, is being misunderstood or this group of people is being singled out by the government, or this minority group is banging their fist on the table. In the body of Christ, there is no, there is no culture, there is no uh, geographical division, only in the world. Okay, so if you're a Christian and you're in the body of Christ, and you're promoting your nationality to the point of nausea, like I see sometimes on Facebook, and people uh, having pride for their nationality after they've been born again, you need to really examine your salvation because there isn't any of that. Mm -mm. Everything, everything that was merged with my identity has fallen away. I'm still Italian, but I don't feel the same about my heritage the way I did years ago. It's not important anymore. It's not important. Um, but when God brings me into the right relationship with himself, I will be in the same condition that Isaiah was. Isaiah was so attuned to God because of the great crisis he had just endured, that the call of God penetrated his soul. The majority of us cannot hear anything but ourselves. And we cannot hear anything God says. But to be brought to the place where we can hear the call of God is to be profoundly changed. And that's what the call of God does to everybody. Okay? We die from the flesh okay we everything that the flesh desires when we're born again slowly dissipates as the new person is created in the image of Jesus 
And we don't desire the things that we used to anymore. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Because our inheritance is not here. And you need to understand this when you have people that you gave birth to that are of the opposite seed. I know it's hard trying to give up hope, okay? But you just need to pray for them, okay? You just need to pray for them because we never know if um, they will wake up at some point and maybe they've just gone astray. But, um, but you know, it could very well be that they don't have the eyes to see or the ears to hear. We don't know that. But it's not up to us to waste all that energy and time on trying to play God by bringing someone um, who's rebellious to their salvation. You just plant the seed and you witness pray and you need to walk away even if it's from your own biology. Biology, our biology was one of the biggest um, seductions on the planet for people. People will die for their families. They will die for them and not even being aware that they're dying for maybe Satan's seed, you know? How, how many of you have given birth to uh, such a rebellious child that just completely destroyed your life and, and just took everything that you had and exploited you uh, for every ounce and breath and, um, and now you, ha you have nothing and nothing in the world but a big huge lesson and a lot of people don't get the lesson they just keep going in and in and in in that loop that hamster on a wheel loop because they don't see it because they're distracted by the biology that biology is mine I gave birth to that flesh it's mine but it isn't it belongs to God whether it's of the Lord or of Satan it still belongs to the Father he created the life you were just the conduit to bring it forth and this is where we get duped in our families by taking more abuse than we have to we need to learn from these lessons people these are lessons if you're going to rise you can't rise up to the father and be elevated in the joy and the love if you're being held down um, by evil forces because your mind and your heart are, have gone astray think about it if you haven't come to Jesus Christ today is a good time to do so because there isn't anything that you could have done in this world that would shock the father and um, if your conscience is pricking you and you haven't come for your salvation, all you have to do is just come to God with a sincere heart, a sorrowful heart, and just ask him f to forgive you and believe that he died on the cross and shed that blood to make a way out for you, out of the cursed world, and to be reconciled back to the Father. Believe that he rose again on the third day. Confess it with your mouth, and you shall be saved. That's it. It's very simple. But it really all takes place within your own heart. So be blessed, people. I love you. Jesus loves you. Never forget how much he loves you. He's coming very, very soon. Keep looking up.